Now, in my last video, we were spraying with an HVLP gun. Today, we're spraying with a pressure pot. A little bit different. These things are capable of spraying a little bit heavier of a material. In the previous video, we used a 4-3-1 ratio. Four parts paint, three parts reducer, one part catalyst. Today, we're priming. I'm not going to add catalyst into my primer coat. It's not a surface coat, therefore, I'm not super stuck on having it hardened or extra glossy. So today, for the primer, we're going to forget about this ratio right here, and we're going to actually focus on a different ratio, four parts primer, one and a half parts reducer, which for us today is going to be acetone, because I want this paint to go off quickly, zero parts catalyst, as I mentioned, but we're going to use the secret weapon, we're going to use two capfuls of Japan Dryer. The Japan dryer coupled with the acetone is really going to set this paint off. It's overcast today, it's a little bit breezy. The faster this paint goes off, the less contaminants and the quicker I can get the job back inside. I use a fair amount of cups and uh, these are the best value that I've been able to find. I see a lot of other guys using them also. So we've got a four to one to half. What we're going to do is we're going to combine that one in that half and that's going to give us our four to one and a half. We'll start out with four ounces and then we'll go and add in and combine rather our one and a half which is going to put us right here. So those are the two bars we're after right there. Now before I add in my Japan dryer, I want to agitate this acetone in and get this paint thinned out because that Jan Japan dryer is really a ticking time bomb. This stuff is very fast acting. Paint strainer, very important. Don't skip that step. These oxide primers, or these rusty metal primers, have a lot of oxides in them. And uh, this one is a little bit older. You can see there's a lot of undissolved solids in there. Not a good thing, not a great thing, but still usable. All right. Lucky for us, we had that strainer. Too much fluid, I'm going to turn that knob down a little. That's looking a little better there. That's what we're after. Now I would highly recommend not spraying in this much wind. Unfortunately for me, I'm up against a tight deadline on this project. I have no other options. I can't move this into the shop and spray it in there because I have welding going on at the same time. I think they forecasted gusts up to 12 miles per hour today. Remember, you can always lay down a thicker coat on a horizontal surface as opposed to a vertical surface.
Now because that was a fairly hot mix and because it's going to be a while before my next coat, I'm going to rinse this gun out with a little bit of acetone. All right, now this is a pressure pot gun here. The air comes in and it pressurizes the pot and that forces the paint up and out the intake tube. Let's go over the specifications for a gun like this. CFM 2.0 average at 40 PSI. I set mine at 40 PSI. You can go up to 50. 40 was a nice pattern for us. Now it has here compressor requirements on the back. It says 1 to 6 gallon do not use. 7 to 34 gallon is going to cycle. It, intermittent use of the gun. So that means if you're going to be spraying a very large job then 7 gallons probably not going to work. 34 gallon might work. Um, you're just going to have a lot of compressor cycling. If it's a small job like let's say that bumper that we're painting right now I would I would feel confident using a 7 gallon. So it looks like you could use as low as a 7 gallon compressor with as little as 2 CFMs at 40 PSI. Now it's been a few hours since this was painted. What we're looking for is glossiness and as you can see it's really not very glossy. It's dulled down quite nicely and we're also going to look for hardness. Now you just want to go into an inconspicuous spot on this bumper and see if your fingernail will leave an imprint. Now while we did not leave an imprint we can leave a little bit of a mark but that's to be expected with this fresh of paint no matter what you do. So I think that will be sufficient for our final coat. Let's go mix up some black. Okay, for our color we've got a gloss black. Now, since we're using the pressure pot and not an HVLP, we're going to go four parts paint, one and a half parts acetone, same as our primer. We're going to add in our one part of catalyst on this one and then we're going to go again with the two caps of Japan dryer. So, four one and a half, one, and then a little bit of Japan dryer. So again, on our mixing cup now, we've got a ratio for that. We've got four parts paint, one, and we're going to combine the half. So we have one and a half parts acetone to one part catalyst. So we're going to mix up four ounces of paint, an additional ounce and a half of reducer, and then we're going to go with our one part catalyst and then we'll add in our two capfuls of Japan dryer on top of that. Remember, you don't want to pour over top of your instructions. Now the catalyst is not 100% necessary. It is going to give you a harder finish and it's going to be a little bit of a gloss enhancer. So keep that in mind depending on what sheen you're going for. Always get your reducers and your catalyst mixed in and dissolved into your paint before you add your Japan dryer. You know, I think I'm going to cut that down to one cap full. You know, they say 90% of product failures happen on the mixing bench. Always take the time and mix thoroughly.
All right, there it is. Just a cheap Rust-Oleum paint job. Should be nice and durable with that hardener in there. And it'll be ready for delivery in a few hours with that Japan dryer and the acetone reduction.